Okay, so in this problem, we're told if 14 moles of helium gas is at 10 degrees Celsius and a gauge pressure of 0 0.350 atm, calculate A, the volume of the helium gas under these conditions, and B, the temperature if the gas is compressed to precisely half the volume at a gauge pressure of one atmosphere. So let's talk about what we're given in this problem. So we're basically told the number of moles is 14 moles. We're given the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. And we're given the gauge pressure is 0 0.350 atmospheres. And so in A, what we're trying to be, uh, what we're going to find is the volume, right? The volume of the helium uh, gas under these conditions here. So how are we going to solve for this? So to do this, you're going to use the ideal gas law, which tells us that the pressure multiplied by the volume is equal to the number of moles multiplied, uh, multiplied by the ideal gas constant times the temperature. So this right here is going to be the formula that we use to solve for this. And so uh, keep in mind what P is. So P is the absolute pressure. So uh, actually, I'll explain that in a second. So uh, if we wanted to solve for V, you would just multiply both sides or divide both sides by P. So you're basically taking the number of moles times the ideal, ca uh, ideal gas constant times the temperature and dividing by the pressure. So we know the number of moles is 14. Uh, the ideal gas constant is just, as I said before, a constant. And so let me give you what that is. So R is equal to 8.314, and the units are joules per mole Kelvin. And so we know that value. Uh, notice that this is in Kelvin. So uh, the temperature, we have to convert it to Kelvin from Celsius. And then also when you do this, the pressure uh, is the absolute pressure. So when you solve this formula, you use the absolute pressure, but they give us the gauge pressure. So you need to know that the absolute pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So uh, it's basically, I'll just call it PA for the atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure. So the absolute pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure. So the atmospheric pressure is, we're just going to assume it's one atmosphere, which is what it is at sea level. So 1 plus 0 0.350 gives you your absolute pressure. So the absolute pressure in this case is 1.350 atmospheres. So all we had to do was add the gauge pressure to the atmospheric pressure, and that gave us our absolute, which is what we use in this formula. Uh, and then, yeah, so also we need to convert T into Celsius, or sorry, into Kelvin. So to convert into Kelvin, you just add uh, 273.15. So just add that to your Celsius, and that'll give you Kelvin. So this is 283.15 uh, degrees Kelvin. So uh, 15 and then K. And so now we have everything in the correct units. So it's just a matter of plugging it in. So uh, the number of moles is 14. Uh, the ideal gas constant 8.314 times the temperature in Kelvin, which we just found, 283.15. Uh, and then you're dividing by the pressure. Uh, but keep in mind, I also forgot to explain this. Uh, we have 1.350 atmospheres, but when you do this, you need it in pa uh, pascals because we want the unit of our volume to be in meters cubed. So you have to convert it to uh, pascals. So uh, basically, you just take your atmospheres and then you multiply one uh, by 1.103 times 10 to the 5 because there's uh, basically 1.013 uh, times 10 to the 5 pascals for every one atmosphere. So you're basically just multiplying those to get it in the correct units. And then, yeah, so now you just want to uh, perform this calculation. Uh, so 14 times 8.314 times 283.15. And then you're dividing 1.350 times 1.013 times 10 to the 5. Uh, when you go ahead and do this, you're going to get 0 0.24099. So 0 0.241. And then the units, since you use pascals, are meters cubed. Keep in mind the units for a pascal is newtons per meter squared. So that's where we get that from. Um, and yeah, so 0 0.241 meters cubed, that's going to go ahead and be the volume of 14 moles of, I believe it's helium, right? Yeah, helium gas at these specific conditions. So this is your answer to A. Now let's go ahead and move on to B. So for B, they say uh, the temperature, if the gas is compressed to precisely half the volume at a gauge pressure of one atmosphere. So in order to solve this, we're going to be using a different formula. And so this one, uh, the formula you're going to use is uh, this one right here. So you should know that P1, so the pressure times the volume, V1, divided by the temperature, 
So you basically know P1 times V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. So basically just two separate times uh, you can relate the pressure, the volume, and the temperature and solve for them. So what we want, they, they're telling us to solve for the temperature, right? So basically T2 after we do something. So the, the temperature after we perform uh, whatever they're asking us to. So basically they want us to find T2. Uh, to solve for T2, uh, you would just multiply both sides, right? So multiply both sides. Uh, and then you have T2 times P1 over V1 divided by T1 equals P2 V2. And then you would multiply both sides by T1. And then we have T2 P1 V1 equals P2 V2 T1. And then you would just divide by P1 V1 to cancel there. And then you have T2 by itself. So basically T2 equals the temperature times uh, P2 over P1 times V2 over V1. So let's go ahead and understand what's going on. So uh, let's read what they want. So the temperature, if the gas is compressed to precisely half the volume at a gauge pressure of one atmosphere. So we're taking our uh, thing in the beginning, right? So our 14 moles, and then we know the temperature here is 10 degrees Celsius, right? Which was 283, 283.15 degrees Kelvin. So keep in mind that we're gonna use Kelvin here. So this is gonna be in Kelvin. So we take the initial temperature divided by uh, right, these two ratios. So we know the volume is gonna get halved. So basically V2 is half of V1, right? Because V1 what it was initially, and then V2 is what it is at the end. So this is just gonna be one over two, right? Because you, you can imagine if V1 was just one, and then this value V2 is just one half, one half over one is just one half. So uh, it's gonna basically half there. And then the pressure is gonna go to one atmosphere. So P2 is one atmosphere. So as I said before, we gotta use absolute pressure. So we have to add the one atmosphere as a result of the atmospheric pressure, right? We're just reusing uh, this formula up here. So one plus one is now two. So this value is now two atmospheres. And then what was the pressure initially, or the absolute pressure initially? It was um, 1.350. So 1.350 ATM. Notice we don't have to convert the units into anything, and that's solely because they're just gonna cancel like this. So the only unit that matters is your temperature unit, right, because it's not getting canceled out. And then, yeah, so all we did was take our initial temperature and then our initial pressure, our final pressure, um, and then basically our final and initial, the ratio between them of the volume. And then we can just go ahead and solve. So you have 283.15, times two divided by 1.350 and then divide by two again. So what you'll find is you get 200, and 209.74. Keep in mind this is gonna be Kelvin. Uh, if we wanna convert into Celsius, uh, you would just minus 273.15. So if you wanna do that, Subtract uh, 273.15 from this value, and you'll get minus 63.41. This will be in Celsius now. So basically, you just add 273.15 to go to Kelvin, and then subtract to go to Celsius. But yeah, so minus 63 degrees. You can round wherever you'd like. I'll just leave it like this, though. And yeah, so this is going to be your answer to B. So this is the temperature after we uh, perform the actions they wanted to us in the problem. And uh, yeah, so this is your answer to A, 0 0.241 meters cubed. Uh, and then this was your answer to B. And then just a quick rundown of what we did. We just used PV equals NRT. Uh, and then we had to know the gas constant. And then the trick was you got to add the atmospheric pressure to get the absolute to plug it in and then make sure it's in the correct unit. So we wanted to convert it to Pascal's. Uh, and then also we need to make sure the temperature was in Kelvin since we're using uh, this unit right here, which has Kelvin and then just plug it in and solve. Uh, and then for this one, you would just use the formula P1 over V1, or P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. You can kind of imagine it as initial equals final, so they have to relate to each other, right, based on this ideal formula. So that's, or, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's basically how you solve this problem. 
And uh, yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.